In every application, what we're essentially doing is displaying and organizing data. So in this video, we'll see how we can do that in five simple ways. We'll create a Java backend along with its UI using various UI components provided by Jamex. Right now, we're planning to get acquainted with the Entity Inspector, Tables and Forms, Tree Tables, and Virtual Lists. We'll also talk about the advanced methods in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. Let's dive in. Let's say we already have a database for a small project management system that we're trying to display. First, we'll need entities to display, so let's generate them using reverse engineering. I already have a Postgres database uh, running in the background. Now what we have to do is reverse engineer it to generate the entities we need. From here, we could generate our UI automatically. For educational purposes, we'll create the views from scratch instead. Now we have all our entities ready to be displayed. Let's launch the application and see what we're working with. As usual, we have our login page and the user view in place. The first thing we can do to display the rest of the data right off the bat is open the data inspector tool available to the admin under the data tools tab. It's an excellent tool for admins to perform bulk operations, verify data integrity, troubleshoot issues directly within the application. But obviously, it's not enough if you need to display data to internal users. The most common way to view structured data, where users can sort, aggregate, or select records, is to create a list of records for a certain entity. Let's create one for our project from scratch. We'll start with an empty view from the UI tab. Here we can call it whatever we want. For best practices, I'll name it following the standard naming conventions for such views. As we can see, Studio has automatically created a descriptor file where we'll define the columns we want to see and its controller for additional logic. We'll change the standard view to standard list view. All right. This is because standard list view provides built in functionality for list views like uh, data loading. To create the table component, we'll need to add a data grid. So we can do that using the add component button. Here, we'll choose the desired entity and actions to display. Later, we can use these actions to create the buttons. As an example, we'll pick the edit action and move on. Studio creates a new data container from which it fetches data, generates the project grid, and defines the actions and columns it will display in the layout. We'll also add a data load coordinator to trigger data loaders that load data to containers before showing the view. Before making a few changes to the controller, we'll quickly add the promise button like so. To edit details of each record, we'll create a detail view with a form component. So here comes another blank view. This time, besides naming it according to best practices, I will add an ID parameter to the route so it can accept data from the table view. We'll do the same as we did with the list view and change it to standard detail view. We'll also add an edited entity container annotation required for the detail views lifecycle. We'll now look for the form component in the component palette under the layout tab. And again, just like in the list view, we'll add a data load coordinator here. The actions we've created automatically link the detail view to the list view by passing the ID to the route. 
Note that when we're creating a blank view, it will be automatically added to the main menu, which we should avoid in the case of the detail view, since we're using it as a redirect. So here we'll delete its reference. Let's restart the application and see how this works. We're seeing our list and when the user clicks edit in the table, the form view opens, allowing us to edit the data. If we have an entity hierarchy that we want to display, like tasks and subtasks, a tree table would be much more suitable. Naturally, the tree table allows us to display data in a tree-like structure within a table format to easily navigate nested data. So nothing too complicated here. We'll create a new view and search for the tree data grid, just like we did in our list view. Essentially, a tree table is pretty similar to a usual data grid. We'll just need to define our hierarchy property. This tells the tree table how to build the tree structure from our data. Notice that Studio will suggest existing attributes. In our case, it's the parent task attribute, which defines the parent child relationship between tasks. Let's see what we've got. And there we have it. Our tasks and subtasks all structured in one table. For those who need to display an extensive list of items with a custom user interface and an infinite scroll, you can use the virtual list. Let's say we want to create a history view with the actions of every user with a particular task. I've written a Spring service that will provide the aggregated data for display. It returns a DTO with the history data. So to implement this in our descriptor, we'll first define the data source, right? So it fetches the data from the DTO class we've created. We've created a virtual list component. We've added an ID and bound it to the data container we've defined earlier. This virtual list will need a renderer. So we can switch to the renderer from the handler tab the supply annotation is used to supply a custom implementation for a component's behavior. In this case, how each item in the virtual list is rendered. Next, we've created a vertical layout where each instance's data will be displayed. We added one H for title in the form of a username and three spans for the status task and date. And finally, we have added these to the layout. And here we'll fill the history data container with data from the service. So let's restart the project and see how our tasks are displayed. And there we have it. The issue with renderers in controllers is that they tend to bloat the controller's code pretty quickly. What we can do instead is use fragments that let us define all elements concisely in the descriptor file, then pass it as a component that can be rendered in other views. For example, for our history board, we'll have a separate fragment view that uses a rendered item container to pass data and creates elements using that data. You can view some more examples on how to use fragments in the UI sample. This way, we've reviewed five simple ways to display data using nothing but Java. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more and suggest how you'd like to see your data displayed in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this video useful. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments or contact us through social media. Links in the description below. See you on the next video.